Hey, this is John of Fathercraft, and in this video, we are reviewing the Cubo AI Baby Monitor. Warning, this material features heavy punditry and may not be suited for all audiences, so viewer discretion is advised. No, I'm just kidding. They're fun puns, I promise. Before we get too far into the review though, I wanted to mention that you can find a link to the Cubo AI Baby Monitor in the description below, along with all the other baby monitors that we mentioned in this video. By clicking those links, you actually help support this channel, so be sure to check them out, thanks. The Cubo Baby Monitor is one of the newest additions to the Wi-Fi baby monitor genre, and it's definitely a powerhouse. Baby monitors like the Owlet, the Nanit Plus, and Miku monitor breathing and other vitals, and when something is amiss, the alarm bells go off. The Cubo takes another approach to monitoring your baby in that it attempts to detect potentially dangerous situations before they happen, as opposed to when they happen. This monitor is kind of like the canary in the coal mine, so to speak. Speaking of canaries, let's take a closer look at the monitor itself. As you can see, it's shaped like a bird, so maybe I'm not that far off with my analogy. All right, so before we take a look at the different types of alerts, let's first take a look at what's under the wing and talk about what kind of specs the Cubo has. So the video feed has a 1080p HD resolution uh, and apparently even one in night vision mode. It also comes with a four time digital zoom and a 135 degree wide angle field of view. You can also manually tilt the camera up and down so uh, that adds to the coverage that the Cubo has of your baby's nursery. Another really nice feature that the Cubo AI has is the lack of visible red light when the night vision mode is on. On top of all that, it comes with some fairly standard specs like temperature and humidity display, two-way audio, continuous audio monitoring, a built-in nightlight, and an 18-hour playback option. Okay, so let's take a look at the alert options the Cubo has to offer. So again, the Cubo takes a different approach to monitoring your baby and alerting you of potentially dangerous situations your baby may get into. Unlike other breathing monitoring baby monitors, which I, I need to stress here that this monitor is not, the Cubo takes a proactive approach to alerting you when your baby ends up in situations that may lead her to not being able to breathe. So this proactive approach allows you the opportunity to do something before it's too late. So the first alert that you can set is the covered face detection alert. When activated, the Cubo will detect when an object is covering your baby's face, which can potentially restrict airflow and increase the chances of suffocation. However, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, there should be absolutely nothing in your baby's crib except your baby. So this alert theoretically should not be needed until your baby is around an age where having a blanket or a stuffed animal is acceptable to have in her crib. I wanna stress here that I'm not dad splaining or mansplaining any of this. This is the uh, recommendation of the AAP, which literally wrote the book on how to keep your baby alive up through the first five years. So I'm taking their word for it. The next alert is the danger zone detection alert, which is great for babies as they get older and more daring. After you set the danger zone area within the app, the alert will be triggered as soon as your baby enters said danger zone. The only thing that would make this alert better is if Cubo had the rights to Kenny Loggins' Highway to the Danger Zone, and every time your baby was in there, that song would start playing, and then you'd put on your aviator shades, put on your leather bomber jacket, hop on your Kiyosaki, zoom into your baby's room, grab her before she does something dangerous, and save the day. That would be awesome. Now this grid can be set anywhere in your baby's room, so either over the dresser or just outside of the crib or basically anywhere your baby may attempt to become a bird and fly far, far away. Force Gump, anyone? Huh? Jenna? All right, moving on to a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and that is mounting options. Mounting options, okay. The G-rated kind, I mean. I firmly believe the more mounting options a baby monitor has, the longer you'll be able to get value out of it. And the Cubo has several mounting options that also happen to come included in your purchase, which is rare as baby monitor purchases go. Now, I have to say at first glance, the Cubo soars above the competitors in this area, but ultimately ends up smashing into a window, and here's why. The multiple mounting options, which include a floor stand, a crib mount, and a surface stand, seems perfect and gives a whole new meaning to bird's eye view. Now, these multiple mounting options give you the ability to easily move the monitor around to different areas of your baby's room. So far, so good, right? But here's where we crash into that window. First, the floor stand has quite a few shortcomings. It's a bit clipped in the wings, if you will. You have to fill this old-timey water bag with water, which then acts as the base weight. That's right, we're weighing down our AI baby surveillance machine with a water bag. These are strange times. So the water bag really doesn't quite do enough to really stabilize the floor stand because it still seems quite wobbly to the touch. 
To compensate for this, you'll need to use these straps to secure the floor stand to the crib, but even with the extra point of contact, it still doesn't completely remove the floor stand's wobbliness. So the surface mount option kind of suffers from the same thing. It feels really lightweight, which makes it easy for the monitor to get tossed around and whatnot. And maybe the biggest surprise of all is that you cannot mount the Cubo to a wall. I mean, to me, this is a strange option to exclude because the ability to mount your baby monitor to a wall is typically the standard mounting option for most other baby monitors. If you're relying on these alerts, but your baby is old enough to mess with the floor stand or the crib mount, you need to be able to mount the monitor on a wall above the crib. So unless you have a surface that's high enough to provide that bird's eye view uh, that you need to see into your baby's crib, yet far enough away from the crib to adhere to the AAP safety standards, the alerts become harder to use. The canary fails to be effective when your baby can like grab and strangle it, you know? All right, so overall, the Cubo AI is an amazing monitor, but there are some drawbacks to consider. First, it doesn't come with a white noise feature, which means you'll need to have another device in your baby's room to fill this need. If that's something that doesn't bother you, then I'd recommend looking into the Hatcheress Plus, uh, which is something that we previously reviewed. So, you know, be sure to check out that video by clicking the link in the description below. Despite the fact that the floor stand comes standard with the Cubo AI, which is again, a great thing for a baby monitor company to do, it's not the most sturdy option and ended up being a bit of a disappointment. It watered down my enthusiasm and as strange as it is for me to say this, the inability to mount the Cubo to a wall is a bit of a head scratcher. If you wanna find out how to create your very own floor stand, we have a video that shows you exactly how to do that. So look for that link in the description as well. Lastly, and this is something I didn't touch on earlier, the app layout design isn't great. The sound and alert controls are not in the most convenient places within the app. And although these how-to infographics are nice to have, I'd rather not see them on the main page of the app. These few drawbacks aside, I still feel like the Cubo AI Baby Monitor is super impressive, especially considering it's on sale for 199 bucks, which is a cool $100 off the original price tag. It also has one of, if not the best picture quality of any baby monitor we've tested. And on top of that, the alerts are extremely useful and innovative. The video feed connects to the app very quickly and I don't think I experienced any dropped connection. Also, according to Cubo's website, they'll be releasing a sleep analytics component to the app in June of 2020. All right, I think I'm done squawking about this baby monitor. Let us know in the comments below if you think these types of proactive alerts could replace the need for breathing monitoring baby monitors or parenting. Just kidding. Also, let us know if there are any other monitors on the market that you'd like us to review, and we'll do our best to check them out. Also, also, be sure to poke, tap, smash, or peck the like button, and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I laughed at my own dad joke. Doing so, subscribing and liking and all that really helps our little channel take flight. Okay, peeps, souls, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.